everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. We are in the middle of a door hanging adventure at the moment. Pretty exciting for us because originally in this house we had a combination of the original council house doors, which were uh, practical but not particularly pretty, and some doors that someone had kindly let us take from the skip um, because that was all we could afford when we were originally doing up the house. But finally, we are ready to completely re replace the doors. It's uh, incredible how much difference it actually makes just getting a decent door um, hanging. So learning lots along the way and I thought I'd share some of the lessons we've learned with you. Okay so the first point which is really easy to overlook is actually taking delivery of your doors and storing them. Now they're quite a big thing to have hanging around in your house and of course first of all you need to get them from your delivery vehicle into your house very carefully and without damaging them because it is very easy to do. Once you've done that, you need to find the best place to store them. Now, in our case, the only place we really had space was the actual new extended kitchen space, um, which isn't ideal because you don't really want to store them where there's high levels of moisture, particularly avoid things like garages. But we found a corner that wasn't massively uh, exposed to moisture in that kitchen and we stored them there. The next thing we had to think about was making sure that we had them flat because they came primed um, but not painted. So that's something that we've had to do further along the way. And um, while they're just primed, they are vulnerable to changing shape, to warping slightly, particularly in the presence of moisture. So we stored them completely flat. We actually used a spirit level to make sure that they were completely flat and we left them undisturbed in the corner of the room so that they were in good shape when it came around to putting them up. Another thing that we obviously had to think about was painting the doors. Now, our doors came primed um, but not painted and this can actually lead to a false sense of security because some people end up with primed doors and they just hang them and don't bother to paint them because they think they're finished. But this is when you end up getting the, uh, the warping and the door doors changing shape because you need to paint them to really complete that protection over them. So be careful not to fall into that trap. Now ideally you want to paint the doors um, lying down so once you've hung them and worked all of that out take them back off and then lie them down because then you'll get a much better finish. Make sure they've had a light sanding so you've got a really nice surface to work on and then we went for a Leyland matte um, fast drying paint so it's perfect the weather was quite nice at the time we gave them a quick couple of coats and they were back on hanging up um, again in no time. So we were lucky enough to have a few tips passed on to us, painting tips from the guy who painted our wardrobes upstairs. And uh, some of them you may know, but things like don't put too much paint on the roller, that was uh, an important one. But also get yourself a decent roller. So this is a Hamilton one. Didn't go to the pound shop for this one, but you can tell straight away the quality of it. Um, but one that surprised me from him actually was uh, that you should go quite slow and gentle with your rolling so don't apply too much pressure and that should keep you out of trouble and last of all a tip that we've learnt ourselves is use good lighting when you're painting because otherwise once you hang the door up all sorts of imperfections that you didn't see when you're painting can come to light <laughs> So people used to favour the more solvent based gloss uh, paints for things like doors but actually now the trend is much more towards matte paints like we've used but also it's important to point out that it's a water based paint that we've used and you can see the original paint that was in this room which was a gloss and you can see how that's yellowed. Now that's probably only been there about three or four years since that was last painted um, but that's really discoloured quite quickly so we hope with this water based matte colour that we'll actually maintain this, uh, this brighter white for much longer. So something else that you might be wondering about is how many hinges you need, either three or two, because you see examples of both. Now, as you may have seen on this door, we've got three. So we've got one at the top here, one in the middle, and one in the bottom down there. Okay, so in terms of having three hinges, one of the reasons people have them is because they've got a heavier door. Now this door isn't particularly heavy, but we've gone for the three hinge option because it gives you a bit more stability, especially if you've got doors um, that are between high moisture and lower moisture level um, areas, then they, the doors tend to be more prone to warping. So this just gives you that extra bit of stability and prevents that. Also a bit more security. And in general, if you've got things like kids who are likely to slam doors and you think the doors are just generally in any way vulnerable, it is useful just to have that third hinge. Okay, so one problem that we had that you might have as well if your house is of a certain age is that this is a... Uh 
ex-1950s council house. So the doors have taken a bit of a battering over the years and they've been replaced a couple of times. And what we basically were working with was a frame and a space that wasn't square. So if you end up hanging the door in that space, which we did the first time round when we replaced our doors, um, you basically, the door may, you may get the door to fit perfectly, but when you actually come to open it, it might end up dragging on the carpet in one space or another. Now, as you can see, this opens perfectly now and we don't have any of those issues. So we looked at this frame in here, it wasn't square, and we decided the easiest thing to do was just completely rip out the frame, take out the door liner, and just buy a new one from, we went to Selco, um, and just put that in, and then we had the perfect space to work with, which is so much easier than trying to get something to uh, fit in a space that doesn't work. So I promise you, if you're in the same situation, as tempting it is as it is to just try and make it fit, it will probably save you time if you just rip it out and start again. Okay, so one last thing, of course, that you've got to think about with doors is door handles. Now, the first thing you've got to think about is where you actually put them. So in this case, we have put ours at about 900 millimetres. Now, building regs say they should ideally be between 800 millimetres and 1,050 millimetres, but I think 900 is about the standard. We've gone for this black mat, which is something that we're doing throughout our house. Um, so in terms of light switches and sockets as well. And really, we've just chosen those to modernise the house a bit and to have something that that ties through the new bit of the house and the old bit of the house as well. So there we go, a few top tips if you're thinking about hanging doors in your house at the moment. I really hope that you found those useful. If you have any tips of your own, please feel free to uh, add them below, of course. As always, thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe and come back very soon. Bye bye for now.